The world may be very divided and full of hate right now, but despite all of that, there is one singular thing I think we can all agree on. 3D printing is pretty cool. However, the main issue with it is that even though it's becoming more mainstream, it's still as confusing as ever. And people who want to get into the hobby have no idea where to even start. Even I don't know where to start, and I consider myself kind of tech literate. You know, it's kind of my job, and I have a whole channel about tech, but like, whatever. So to help both you and me out, I managed to get the 3D Print General to answer a few burning questions of what on earth is going on here? Hey Alexander, I'm excited to help you get into this fun and sometimes frustrating hobby of 3D printing. So naturally there's a lot to unpack when it comes to 3D printers and for anyone who wants to get into 3D printing, of course the first thing you need to do is get a printer. Though seeing how some printers can cost several hundred, maybe even several thousand dollars, it makes the whole ordeal seem kind of restrictive and only something rich people can enjoy. So exactly how much should you spend on a 3D printer? Are there any big differences between the cheaper printers and the more expensive ones? Are the cheaper ones just some um, made in China garbage that are gonna light your house on fire? Or are the most expensive ones basically like the Gucci or Supreme versions of 3D printers? That's a great question. It depends on the material options you want to be able to print and the consistency of the prints. The most basic printer is the Ender 3 by Creality, and the first few prints you run on that in standard PLA will come out great, just as good as any printer that costs 5 times as much. Most people though will start to see degradation in their print quality over time, and it also has the inability to print more exotic materials without upgrades. There are quite a few things that set these printers apart, but essentially there are 2 or 3 things that really make a difference, making printers unique from one another. First is the build type. There are basically three different build types for printers. The first and most common is Cartesian. There are exceptions to the rules I'm about to say, but the majority of Cartesian printers have the Hanan move in the X axis, the build plate move in the Y axis, and then the entire Hanan carriage moving up and down in the Z axis. These have some benefits, the biggest being that they're easier and cheaper to build. The next type of printer comes in a few different names but essentially it's when the build plate moves up and down and the hot end moves in the X and Y direction. The most common and preferred type of this is called Core XY, which you'll hear the most often, so I will just call these printers that, though they aren't all Core XY. Core XY has become the preferred printer style for many makers because the lack of a build plate rattling back and forth can have your prints come out cleaner. Core XY printers generally cost more than standard Cartesian. The third and least common type of printer is called a delta printer. These move in their own unique triangular fashion that you see on the screen now. These have the benefit of being able to print faster than the previous two, though they are not nearly as common. They also have to be very tall for their build area, making them difficult to stack in a rack. The next big thing that sets printers apart are their hot end and extruders. Hot ends and extruders are really the only two things that make the physical build of a 3D printer unique compared to other manufacturing machines. The extruder pushes plastic, then melts it through the hot end. Stock hot ends on inexpensive machines can only reach a maximum of 240 or 250 degrees Celsius, which makes it difficult to print higher temperature materials. All metal hot ends are more expensive, but can generally allow for you to print up to 300 degrees Celsius meaning you have a much wider array of material options that you can print. And then the extruder is very important. The stock extruder on inexpensive machines are plastic, do not have a gear ratio, and are usually under $10. These extruders can work for hard plastics, but they do not allow for any real torque, meaning you can only print hard plastics and generally not very fast. These extruders can then be set up in either a Bowden or direct fashion. Bowden is when the extruder is mounted to the frame of your printer, then pushes filament over a distance to the hot end. A direct extruder is when the extruder is mounted with the hot end and pushes filament directly into it. Generally speaking, direct is more preferred since it allows for more printing options. I can talk about different types of extruders for a while, but one other thing that sets printers apart is the build quality itself. Do they only have one Z lead screw or two? Do they use linear rails to move their axes, or do they use rollers on aluminum extrusion, or bearings on smooth rods? In general, linear rails are the most preferred, but also the most expensive. So generally speaking, the inexpensive machines will be Cartesian, have less build stability, have a hot end that can only reach 240 degrees, 
and we'll have an underpowered extruder set up in a Bowden fashion. The more expensive machines should be Core XY, strong build quality, a hot end that could reach a higher temperature, and a direct extruder with a lot of torque and grip. These more expensive machines will give you more longevity without needing maintenance, won't require upgrades, and will give you the ability to print a wide array of material options. There are other technical additions printers can have such as bed levelers, flexible build plates, filament runout sensors, and quite a lot other, but in general, what I covered are the biggest differences. You got all that? That was a lot of information, but whatever, let's move on. Now that we have an idea of pricing, well, there's still the issue of there being so many different brands to choose from, and I personally only ever heard of like two of them, Flashforge and Prusa. So are there any brands that are consistently better or consistently worse than others? And are there other things we should look out for when it comes to buying for a specific brand? Like for example, really proprietary parts or proprietary software? Most people that I know suggest looking into the Creality Ender 3 as their their first printer. Since it is so inexpensive and gives people the opportunity to see if this is a hobby that they want to get into. That said, they certainly have their drawbacks being the least expensive option. If this is a hobby that you want to learn and tinker with and not spend too much money, the roughly $200 Ender 3 or Ender 3 V2 are great options. There are also many many clones of this Ender 3, all with the same functionality as the Ender 3, often at a lower price. I generally say to stick with Creality though, since there are communities that are specific to those machines that can help you if you ever run into issues, since they are such a common machine. Creality actually just made a pretty decent upgrade version of this printer called the Ender 3 S1. I actually suggest this printer to new people, but it costs about $200 more than the standard Ender 3. You get more than $200 worth of upgrades though, meaning I think it is the better deal. And then Prusa is likely the most liked printer company in the market. Their machines are pretty pricey, coming in at around $1,000. And to be honest, the parts on the machine don't necessarily warrant the price in my opinion. What is great about Prusa though, is the customer support and community. If you buy a printer from Creality, I can suspect that you'll never receive a message back if you have a question. That isn't the case with Prusa, they have a great track record with their users. I have also begun to like Chidi, spelled Q-I-D-I, since they offer enclosed printers for higher temperature materials at a relatively low starting price. They are a bit harder to modify, but if you need a starter printer that can print higher temperature materials, that is another good option. All three of those printers, as well as most printers on the market, don't require proprietary software or proprietary material. Flashforge is a company that uses their own slicer, and I often find their prices to be a bit too high for what they offer. That said, you can tweak slicing software to even work with theirs. The most proprietary company is likely MakerBot. They require their own software and parts, though to be honest, I'm not really sure if they're selling many printers anymore. The other company would be XYZ Printing, but again, I don't know many people who buy their printers anymore. Most printers offered today, especially those under $1,000, can work with any software and any material manufacturer. To note, I often do say that there is a gap in the market for printers around $600. Most printers at that price don't justify their price in my opinion, when I personally think a great printer could come in at $600. Right now, most printers are really inexpensive and need upgrades, or cost over $1,000. Okay, so that's a quick rundown of the key brands, and with that, I say we have a pretty good idea of everything that goes into a 3D printer itself. But that isn't even where the complexities of 3D printing stop, because then there's also the huge debate of what kind of materials you should be using. Yep, you know the drill by now. 3D print general, save us from this burning question. PLA, or polylactic acid, is by far the most common material and will work on every printer available. They can print in just about any environment and will print the cleanest. The issue is that they have a low temperature resistance and low impact resistance. There are actually new types of PLA options such as PLA Pro or PLA Plus depending on the manufacturer that offer a lot more impact resistance and actually work well for mechanical purposes and print just as easy as regular PLA. Unfortunately though, they still have the low heat resistance. PLA will start to deform at around 50 or 55 degrees Celsius which means they can't be left in a hot car without deforming. ABS is another common material, and it's what Legos are made out of. It has great mechanical properties and a heat resistance somewhere between 90 and 100 degrees Celsius. 
ASA is a new type of material that is very similar to ABS, but has the added benefit of UV resistance, so it's a bit more preferred now, and also a little more expensive. The issue that comes with ABS and ASA is that they require a higher ambient air temperature to not warp or delaminate layers. This means that the printer needs to be enclosed and keep the ambient air around 50 degrees Celsius or higher. Enclosed printers generally cost more, though there are tents available that you can put your entire printer in. The larger the ABS part and the more dense it is, the harder it will be for you to print without a high ambient air temperature. If you're printing a very large, very dense part, it's likely you're going to have a lot of difficulty if you don't have active heating for your printer getting the ambient air temperatures closer to 60 degrees Celsius. And those types of printers are not nearly as common. All that said, PLA Plus and PLA Pro can do most applications that you would need ABS for, so long as you don't need the heat resistance. There's also PETG that's very common and easy to print and has chemical resistance, though it's not quite as popular anymore for mechanical purposes now that there's PLA Plus and PLA Pro. There are also flexible material options normally called TPU, and these are pretty fun to print with. But going back to my extruder talk, you will need a direct extruder with a gear ratio in order to print the very soft ones. From here, there are a lot of other options ranging in strength, flexibility, heat resistance, and price. From nylon to carbon fiber reinforced materials, each has their own benefit, price, and difficulty to print. So that's a pretty good rundown of all the different materials you can use and which ones you should buy to use with your printer. But speaking of buying stuff for your printer, exactly what else should you buy in order for this process to run smoothly or run at all? Because I doubt that everything you'd ever need just comes in a box. While I have an endless supply of random equipment, the majority of what you'll need to run your printer should come with your printer. Allen keys, scraper, SD card, all of that should be included. I have been recommending the company Magigoo for people who have difficulty with getting their prints to stick since they make a great bed adhesion gel. The first layer of any print is normally the most difficult to get to lay down properly. To help with this, you can just lay down some Magigoo so that the parts stick great when the build plate is heated and then come off easy when they're at room temperature. I can probably tell you $200 worth of other accessories and tools that might make your life a bit easier, but you should have everything you need when you buy your printer other than the material itself. And well, there you go, pretty much all the information you could need when it comes to getting started with 3D printers. So I know there was a lot of info in these answers, so I apologize if it was a bit dense. I have a full intro to 3D printing series on my YouTube channel, which can help anyone getting into the hobby. I also offer anyone who is either a member of my channel, a patron, or someone who bought my book to reach out and email me anytime with any questions or printing problems. But Alexander, please make sure to keep me informed on your decision. So once again, I would love to thank the 3D Print General for joining me on this journey because I think this has turned into a pretty educational video, right? At least I hope it was educational for you guys. It definitely was for me and I went from someone who knows pretty much nothing about the area to finally placing an order for my very first 3D printer. You want to know which one I got? Well definitely subscribe to the channel because I will be making a lot of videos on that thing so you don't want to miss those. Trust me they're going to be some really fun videos and hopefully more of them involving the 3D print general in the future. And if you want to help support either of us then the general's channel is going to be up in the icons or down in the video description below. Plus he does have his new book about 3D printing so if you want to learn more that's going to be a great resource. Plus down in the video description below you're also going to find our Amazon links if you want to buy a 3D printer for yourself after seeing this video. If you want to support my channel so I can make more expensive purchases for videos like a 3D printer in the future then the best way to do that is to support our channel on Patreon because even just one single dollar a month truly goes a long way while you get awesome perks as well. I'd also love to thank my existing patrons Gavin Burns, Ryan, Okie B, Meg Sumner, Shane Allcraft, Lansby, Common Gage Clothing and Jesse Herberman. Now now you're also going to find our Discord server if you can talk to me or others about this or whatever else really, plus then there's our social media links as well. But anyway that's about it, so I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did then remember to subscribe, like whatever, and I'll see you all in whatever I make next. Goodbye everyone. Good. Bye.